Yeah, I'm Dr. T. Manoha, Chief Urologist, Columbia Hospitals, Bangalore. The trend is, it depends upon the which uh, patient is dealt with, whether it's a childhood, whether it's adult, whether it's a male, whether it's a geriatric age group. So the diseases which commonly occur in child age group is congenital disorder, where we see more commonly the blockages in the urinary tract. Whereas it comes to an adult age group, it comes to kidney stone, kidney diseases, because of their lifestyle changes. When it comes to adult and geriatric age group, because of the anatomical abnormality, because of the anatomical growth, they suffer from some kind of prostatic diseases, be it enlargement or prostate cancer. And to be specific, some of the diseases which related to health disorders, health hazards like smoking, which produces bladder cancer, again, it is common in older age group. And certainly in female, the certain diseases are very different and they suffer from some diseases which the men does not suffer from. It, this, is, this is very common in Indian scenario, whereas in the West, the percentage of diseases are very limited because they reach the hospital early, whereas in our scenario, in our country, our reach to the hospital is late and we come with a lot of uh, advanced diseases. The gender differences in urology is really uh, astonishing facts because in, we have some kind of diseases like urinary tract infection, which is very common in women, in females, and in younger age group. Whereas in men, it's not so common because of their anatomical uh, delineation, which is very compared to, which is very different when compared to men and women. The urinary tract infection is very common in females because of their uh, hygiene, as a, especially in case of uh, Indian social economic background. And in cities, it is different, whereas in, in the village, it is different. As far as the West is considered, their difference is, again, enormous. About 50% of the women who go to the hospital because of the urinary tract infection, whereas in case of in Indian women, there's only about 10 to 15% go to the doctor early because of the differences of uh, antibiotic usage, whereas in West, then nobody uses antibiotic, whereas in Indian women uses the antibiotic at their a very low level. This makes the difference of uh, uh, usage of antibiotic or the diseases per se between the West and Indian scenario. In prostate, the advancements are very going in a steep uh, ladder starting from uh, medical treatment, and also in medical treatment, there are a lot of advancements are happening. When it comes to surgical part of it, there are various kind of lasers are available, and there is a robotic surgeries are available to tackle this disease. In prostate, the difference is to know about the enlargement, or whether the enlargement is due to cancer, or it's a benign kind of diseases. When it comes to enlargement of the disease, prostate, there are use of lasers, whether it is a small gland, whether it's a large gland, and whether it's a too big a gland, depending upon that lasers have been utilized. Among the laser, there are various lasers. There are about four or five lasers, particularly to the particular organ. We have a thulium laser, we have got a holmium laser, we have got a diode laser, to list few of them. Each one of them can be used for a particular kind of a prostate enlargement. For example, if I want to use a KTP laser, the patient who has on a blood thinners and who has got a small prostate, and if patient cannot go undergo any anesthesia, there we use a KTP laser because that can be done under local anesthesia. Whereas if the prostate is very big and the patient is tend to have high risk condition, there we cannot use this KTP laser because it has got limitation of its usage. So there we move on to a holmium laser where it can tackle the bigger prostates, a huge prostates. In fact, you know, we have a higher series in India to tackle this disease and we have treated about 475 grams of the prostate using a Holmium laser in a single surgery. So the advancements are really going very fast in usage of this. Same Holmium laser can be utilized in uh, uh, kidney stones also. Apart from that, the other lasers which can be used in the prostate are Thulium laser and a diode laser, but these two lasers are still not approved by the FDA. Laser is a technology which is called as laser amplification stimulated emission of radiation. This is just a, a collineation of the light lasers, and they pass through an organ, and then when the organ is targeted, that the whole organ is uh, either it is cut through or it has been decimated. So the laser is an energy rays which touches the target, and this target is get dissipated. It's called as a laser. This is a simple uh, terminology. 
So there are, as I told you that the lasers are various lasers, kind of whole meme laser, how does it hack? All these things are depends upon the wavelength. The wavelength is the speed at which they travel and the energy at which they impact produces the various kind of lasers, like holmium laser, thulium laser, the dyad lasers, kind of uh, such things. Whereas in a holmium laser, you see that the rays passes through and uh, there should be some amount of element of water is there. For example, in a stone, if the laser hits the stone, in the stone, there is about 10% of water content is there. The, this water on emission of the laser radiation, there's a lot of vaporization occurs. They produce the small bubbles under high pressure, and these small bubbles break the stone into multiple small pieces. This is how the technology. Currently, or previously, we had certain lasers which fragment the stone into bigger pieces. Now, after that, a decade uh, back, we found the lasers much lesser size. The lasers are breaking the stone into small, small pieces. And now we have a laser. It's about a uh, pulse width technology wherein the stones are getting into dusted. So earlier days, about say about a decade back, we used to treat the stone about one centimeter stone, which makes the small fragments and patient is to pass. Now, the laser advancement is such with the pulse width and their wavelength technology, wherein the stone can get dusted. Even with the one centimeter, or be the two centimeters or three centimeter stone, they're getting dusted and then they pass it through their urine. So this is the kind of advancement and possibly we are seeing in another uh, five years or so, the laser is going to get a, so much of boost, possibly that we can even treat three or four centimeters or be it seven centimeter stones without even touching the patient or even under a patient putting into a uh, cold knife. Columbia, as I would rather say that the, all the technology under one roof, be it a Holmium laser, be it the KTP laser, be it the Thulium laser, we have all the technology under one roof and the patient gets the cafeteria choice. The options are very wide. For example, if I ask for the stone diseases, if the patient has got open surgery to laparoscopic surgery, laser surgery, robotic surgery, we have all the things geared up to tackle from one to the other end. When it comes to the prostate, yes, if you have a prostate disease, small prostate, large prostate, or the patient who's got a high-risk cardiac patient, so we have a technology where we can tackle with the monopolar technology, a bipolar technology, or with the open surgery, which is the laser technology or the robotic technology. So we have all the things geared up and the patient, depending upon the patient choice, depending upon the patient cost preference, which is depending upon their early recovery. So we give, explain all these things in detail and they can choose and we can give the best advice, what is best for him. In Columbia, we do have certain uh, technological advances like robotics, which uh, the diseases can be tackled at a very high level and the technology like the image-guided technologies where we can do a ultrasound-guided approach in the intraoperatively. We use a, a particular disease technology can be utilized during the surgery. We use image-guided, color CT-guided, ultrasound-guided, and we have certain kind of uh, uh, procedures like uh, uh, the ultrasound-guided interventional procedures wherein we use only the needles and a robotic arm which goes inside there, and we have a small scope which goes inside there, like a fiber optic scope. So it is some kind of procedures which other technologies are, others are not caught up with this technology wherein we use a very, very minimal access procedures, be it a kidney stone or a prostate diseases or a kidney cancer or a prostate cancer. So whatever the technology we lined up for the uh, particular disease scenario, every procedure is done with uh, precision and every procedure is done with a minimally invasive or technique.